Um, but otherwise, we're going to move on to ancient metagenome deer, uh, which is the next uh, session for the next half an hour or so. So once you've got your project, you've you've got your ancient DNA, you've sequenced the DNA. Um, the question is, is where to get other data to compare your data to? So particularly when you're working with microbiome samples or ancient pathogens, um, you often have to build um, do comparative analyses to basically compare your samples to make sure do they fit in a certain pattern, or if you're building a phylogen phylogenetic tree, you need to have other genomes to basically uh, see the relationships between. And so the question that leads us to is where do we actually get such comparative data from previously published um, uh, publications? Um, there's a variety of reasons why you should use this public data. So like I just mentioned, you often doing comparative analysis, you need to have other, other um, data to compare to. If you're dealing with, let, uh, sorry, most often, and this applies to most scientific or biological um, studies, you, the more samples you have, the stronger statistical power you have. So the more robust uh, co um, conclusions you can make, the more confident conclu conclusions you can make from the patterns you see in your data. Um, particularly with ancient DNA, it's useful to be able to compare your data against other samples, um, particularly when you're trying to understand um, preservation. So you will often have a range of good, uh, well, or well preserved samples, not so well preserved samples and really bad samples, and being able to compare your samples you've just generated against this range of um, a, a data set, you can sort of estimate approximately how well uh, your samples you're going to analyze uh, newly are going to look like. And also using public data um, uh, is very useful because you can also actually um, do meta-analyses. So you don't even have to generate your own data, but rather you can um, just take everything everyone else has published already, do uh, other analyses, for example, um, tracking changes over time and things like this, or trying to correlate ancient DNA damage with certain um, environmental conditions. You don't need to generate your own data for this. You can also do this from public data already. And so you can generate your own new ideas and projects without having to rely on expensive sequencing and having to have an ancient DNA lab. So the most common places that we get we go to uh, in genetics to get our sequencing data are places like the NCBI SRA, the EBI ENA if you're in Europe. So NCBI is in America, EBI ENA in Europe, and then also the DDBJ, I think it's also, also called the SRA in, in Japan. So if you're based in the Pacific, that's where you go for that. Um, these are really nice databases. These are almost the de facto standard in genetics and genomics. Um, the vast majority of researchers around the world will upload their raw sequencing data up to these sort of databases. There's very few that you don't uh, get this uh, from. Um, and there are other places. So sometimes people will upload the data to inst institutional FTP servers. You may also get sequencing data from um, field specific databases. Uh, so if you're working on, I don't know, fly um, neurology or something like that, they will probably have their own databases. And also there's increasingly more additional sort of more general databases such as Zenodo, Figshare and GitHub, which people may also upload their data to. However, the main ones are, yeah, the SRA and the ENA. And um, so these are the ones I'd re generally recommend that you go to because we they are funded um, for very long periods, they're very stable and, and so on. So this is where, you, where you'd go to search for your data. However, this brings us on to the next question, which is, is our data fair? So what I mean by this is um, a set of principles that were defined back in 2016, um, talking by researchers trying to, or and sort of librarians trying to say, well, okay, it's great if you upload your data um, to public databases, but can you actually find it? Can you actually use it? And so they came up with this, these four um, criteria, which is whether the data is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reproducible to ulti ultimately make your data useful and usable and sort of follow the open science and open um, source uh, philosophy. Um, and so if we look at ancient metagenomic data, it is definitely accessible because paleogenomics has actually been celebrated as being one of the best fields to actually upload all of our data to public archives. So we can pretty much get 99.5% of our data uh, from places like the ENA or SRA. Um, in genetics, we're fortunate that we have pretty standardized file formats, FASTQ files, BAM files, and things like this, meaning that they are the file formats are interoperable, so you can actually use them in across many different tools and so on. And also because this, 
the Firefox Master Standard and the vast majority of our um, tools that we use to analyze such data are open source, um, our analysis is generally very reproducible. But when we come back to findable, this is a bit more of a tricky challenge. And this is because the metadata around your files um, is spread over many, many, many different places. So while you have your sequencing files, they will have some name, but this name could be gobbledygook, which is only readable for you. And you upload that the ENA and you say, look, I've shared my data, it's all good. But that doesn't mean that people can find it. You need to give information about the file, like what sample it is, where maybe the sample is from, um, how old it is. This also needs to be associated with the files for, for people that use search engines to find it. But currently in ancient metagenomics and ancient DNA in general, um, we don't do a very good job of this. So a lot of the metadata you'll find in the actual publication rather than the, the file with the files themselves. Um, so you often have to look in the main text or the SI or external databases where people have uplo uploaded their data. But then on top of that, each author will report different types of metadata. They'll record this data metadata in many different formats. Um, so it's not consistent across the different publications. And on top of this, each database you upload to will have its own metadata types and formats and it's all, all over the place. So actually trying to track um, uh, sort of where the sample files are gone and what they are is very, very difficult. So often if you say, I want to build a data set of 200 samples uh, spread across, let's say 10 publications, you would have to um, go through one by one through all of these publications and looking in all these various different places, which can be a very time consuming task to find such information. I got the wrong thing, so one second. So this brings me on to ancient metagenome data. So uh, one of the reasons why my PhD took so, such a long time is finding such comparative data was a, pain, a complete pain in the ass. It took a very, very long time and I got very fed up by it. Um, also given um, big um, databases such as the Human Microbiome Project, they basically uh, locked down all of their data halfway through my PhD and I couldn't get any of the metadata anymore or the data again, which is really, really bad and frustrating. Um, and so this, uh, using the under the spam community inspired me to set up the Ancient Metagenome Data Project, which is a community created resource of lists of all published shotgun sequenced ancient metagenome or microbial genome uh, level enriched samples, um, but in a form that is all completely standardized. So we have lists of the samples with the critical metadata that we need to know how to search and to filter down the samples that you would want to do for your research. And um, this is currently split across um, three main um, sort of subdisciplines or sub subfields, which is uh, host associated metagenomes. This is typically microbiome samples, host associated single genomes. So this is pathogen genomes, let's say Yersinia pestis or, or TB, and also environmental, uh, environmental metagenomes. So typically from sort of ice cores and things like that. And we already have, um, I think, over a thousand or multiple thousands of samples in our data in our repository, and this is spread across the world and uh, spanning from today back to I think a hundred thousand years ago or so. So it's a really big data set already. And what it ultimately actually looks like, even though it, I call it sort of a sort of database. Um, is a set of TSV files, so tab-separated value files. These are very similar to what you or you can upload into Excel. And you have different columns, such as the project name, publication year, uh, and all the sample names that you go down with different bits of information. And the important thing is all of these columns are standardized. So we have fixed lists, so drop-down menus. We have specific ways of formatting the different columns, which again makes it very easy that when you open this a table or tabular file into Excel or into Drive, Google Drive or um, um, R, um, is very easy to basically filter down to the stuff you want. Um, and so at its core, there are sort of three main sort of aspects that we uh, include for all of the tables, which is the publication information, then the sample name and sample type. So what is the sample name as referred to in the Application, and is it calculus, is it bone, is it a tooth, and so on. Then we have the age of the sample, sorry, not three, three categories, five categories, and then the age of the sample, because obviously we're dealing with ancient DNA, it's very important to know how, our, how old our samples are. 
Then we have the geographic location, where it's from around the world. And finally, archive accession ID. So this we don't actually include the data within our repository, on ancient metagenome data, but we give you the location of the actual raw sequencing data. So for example, we'll say this on the ENA, and it's uh, under this accession ID. So you can basically take that accession ID, search on the ENA, and then download it from there. And it's not just sample metadata that we, we have. Um, we're already expanding the, the project to include other information. So very, 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 very soon, we'll be releasing a new release with library-level metadata. So as Tina um, emphasized this morning, ancient DNA, DNA is a bit special um, because we have very short read lengths and we have damage. And this is very important to know whether the files you're downloading has such, such um, characteristics. Um, so we extend our um, repository to include information such as has it been UDG treated or not, which polymerase have you used. Um, referring back to Monday, when I was talking about the poly G trimming, um, whether the libraries were sequenced on a two or four color chemistry in, uh, sequencing machine. Um, so this information will be there as well. So it's not just finding the samples that you want, you can also be able to filter down to the specific libraries that you want. And you also will know exactly um, um, what you'll be getting out of these files and how to then process them downstream. And as we'll show this afternoon, this sort of data. In addition, and we're going to look through this today, we're preparing at the same time a special tool to basically allow you to um, fil uh, filter down these tables uh, in, a, in a browser, but also generate download scripts for you. So you don't also don't have to yourself anymore go to like the ENA or SRA to download such databases, uh, files, but rather um, we generate a script which you can just simply run uh, one command um, on your terminal, on your server, and it'll download the data for you. And finally, um, coming soon, this is a long-term project. We're actually trying to come up with a standardized reporting sheet. So we hope that basically everyone in ancient metagenomics will take this sheet and include it in the supplement. Um, it'll follow specific um, standardized guidelines on how you should format everything. Very similar to ancient metagenome, dear, but a bit expanded. And it means that we again, much easier for you to rapidly identify in a particular publication um, uh, sort of what information you want, but also this sheet will have to be uploaded with your data to the ENA or SRA. So this data will then be stored in the SRA or ENA, um, and you don't have to use necessary projects like Intermeta Genome Deer anymore to actually get your data, because actually now your data will be findable. So what we're going to look at today is this uh, new download tool. It is in beta. It's not released yet, um, but it's relatively stable, and I want you to play around with this today. So this is on, uh, if you ever want to down, try and install it yourself, you can go to the AMDIRTY or AMDIRT, uh, depending on how you want to call it, uh, repository, and that's under the SPAM community GitHub organization. So what I'd like you to do now is um, go to, if you have it, hopefully, uh, this directory. So CD vol volume 2C introduction to HG metagenome here. If you do not have this, because you're downloading still the eager data, for the people who did not have anything in the volume, um, you can just go to your downloads directory again, that's fine. Once you're in that directory, I would like you to make double check that you have activated your Git eager um, condo environment. So you should see Git eager in your command line prompt. Oops. And then I'd like you to type in am dirty filter. And while you do that, I'm just going to send myself something. Uh, give me a moment. So I'll give you a minute to do so. So has any, anyone had any problems?
Okay, don't worry about tarring. You don't need to do that. Just change, in, change into your downloads folder, and then you can run the commands from there. That's also fine. And what I'm also going to do now is actually try and share my other screen and do it myself. Uh, I'm going to tend to be you. Sorry about that. So, there you go. So, either you will be, I need to learn how to use a Mac for a moment. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, you will either be in a directory called vol, volume 2c, introduction to intermission and beer, which should be empty, or you should be in your um, downloads folder, for example, like this. Doesn't matter where you are. Then you should have also run git activate git.eager. No, sorry, conda activate it myself. On the activate the figure. And in here, you need to run am t and then filter. And when you do this, what you should have popping up is your web browser. And you should see something like that. Is everyone seeing something like that? The reads got thumbs up, thumbs up from Trey. Who else? Okay, this is good, 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 good. A lot of people seeing something like that. Great. So if you're seeing that, I shall shut this. Oh, no, let me just tap back over for a moment, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, so you can see Megan's exciting new paper coming up very <laughs> soon. Uh, where has phone gone? Uh, you minimize it, so it should be a little. The right corner slides. There we go. <laughs> Apologies for that. Where were we? So you, everyone should be seeing this. So this is the first uh, uh, thing you should be seeing. Obviously, just that. What I first want you would like you to do is on the left hand side, where it says no table selected. Click the drop down menu and select ancient single genome post associated. And then you should see a table appearing on the right hand side, and it should begin with Schoenemann 2013. Once you've done that, I would like you to then, under project name, click on the header. And you should have a little symbol like this, the filter symbol, which should allow you to then filter something down. So with this, you can make sure it says contains and type in Koffer 2021. So something like this. And remember, if you're having any problems, you can go down to making in the bottom. So you should be searching for a pocket 2021 like this. And you should see that basically this filters down. And there's many different weird and wonderful ways you can filter. So add multiple publications if you want that. You could also scroll to the side and search for some, something else at the same time. And once you've filtered down to pocket 2021, I would like you to just scroll to the right-hand side. So you may have to um, use two finger scroll if you've got a, you're on a laptop, for example. And go to geolock name, so the country name. And again, like this is a standardized column and type in United Kingdom and you should result in about four, um, four samples. I can also try to do this myself. So 
So I will go to table selectors, go to sing ancient single method genome, which loads here. I click on the oh burger symbol, sorry, I got that wrong. So burger symbol first. I type in Crawford 2021. And if it is down to Crawford 2021. As this, I will try to scroll right. You may have to hold down. Oh, not that. Sorry, I'm on a map. Let me use. Scroll right on it. Ah, okay. Uh, Megan says if you click on the on the table, you can use arrow keys to go across the cells. I think like a cell, sorry. A better way. So I'm looking for geolog name, which is here. You can press the burger, and I said United Kingdom. And you should be left with four samples here. Has everyone got four samples? Comes up from read, comes from tray. Bing. Pooja. Vanina, I think. Great, good, 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 good. And now this is sort of where the sort of magic comes in. I'd like you now to tick the four samples. You should still have the side on, I think. And we now can, I would like you to press validate selection. So whatever pop, pops up here will depend on your download methods. I should recommend keeping curl for now. But when you press validate selection, what you should then get is a bunch of buttons at the bottom, which is download curl sample, download script, download in a core eager input TSV, and download citations as good package. So once you see these, I'd like you to download all three. We should then download your downloads directory in there. So you should be seeing something like this. So we're to the slides. So yeah, you press validate, you select the button, you select the four Thomas of the United Kingdom, download the curl sample scripts, eager and bibtech. So you can now close the tab in the web browser, close the window entirely if you want. And in the terminal, you can probably press Control X to shut the undirty um, tool. You see what I mean? I'm going to go to X in the top right hand corner and press X to close it. You have a bunch of stuff here. Again, beta version. You can do Control X on your keyboard. Sorry, Control C on your keyboard, and you should see something like this. Is everyone be able to do this? So Katri says okay. Louis says okay. Maria, Jamie, good, good, good. Johnny. Wonderful. So once you've done that, you can then change into your um, downloads folder. I forget what's the key. Ooh. CD, tilde, downloads capital V, and run ls. And you should see the three files you downloaded. Yeah, come to the tray again. I can only see half the people at the moment, so I apologize. Okay, from another thumbs up. Patrick's okay. Mohammed's okay. Rafael, I think. Good, 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 great. What I'd like now like to do is cat the curl download script. So cat window, cat. Ancient metagenome deer curl down, curl down a script. And you should see a script as you were looking with Ida and Dieter yesterday. 
but this has the actually has a question. Does anyone remember what the this thing at the top of your script file is called? You can spin the chat if you want. Okay. Shebang, shebang, exactly. It's called shebang. This basically indicates it's a bash script. And so um, you can tell bash to run this for you. And the curl command, I can't remember if Thesis and I'd introduced this, but this is another alternative to wget, which is found more commonly across multiple um, uh, Unix machines, so much Linux. But if you want to now download your sequencing files, the four libraries from Pocket 2021, you can just run bash. An ancient metagenome beer curl down the script. We might be about to be blocked by the ENA, but we can do this. So try running this. And you should see something like this happening. <laughs> and you should see now your four fast queue files. Are people getting this? Maria, is it thumbs up? Good, Emily's thumbs up. Good, 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 good. So we hope with the Ancient Metagenome Deer project, being able to basically filter down these standardized metadata tables, and um, now with the AmDirty tool, make it much easier, much more rapid for you to basically access the data you want. But we don't stop there. So the next thing is if you want to cite everything, so let's say you, because of course you're downloading the data, you want to compare, you should cite the original publications. This bib file should normally show the citation information, so you want to run this, cat this, of the publication. So unfortunately, uh, Archer's paper is a bit too new at the moment, so it's not been indexed on Crossref. Um, but you can see, for example, you've used Intermetagenium disk and citation information here. So with this file, this bib file, you can upload to most um, uh, uh, reference managers like, like Zotero, Paperpile, uh, Endnote, probably, but I don't know, Mendeley, and things like this. So you drag and drop into that, and then you can already have your citation information there for you for citing in your manuscript when you're writing a method section. And then also on top of this, uh, the third file we download is this eager input. So this eager is something we're going to look at um, this afternoon. And eager is a pipeline dedicated for processing ancient DNA. And it takes as input um, a table, uh, a TSV file. So if you enter this, what you'll see is a table. This is all formatted in the way that the eager pipeline requires. And you have all this metadata that I was referring to earlier, sorry, in the, in the Ancient Metagenome Deer project, also the important ancient DNA characteristics about the various libraries, which Tina was talking about this morning, and how um, you, you need to process each library or each sample slightly differently depend, depending on what you did, either during the library construction or in the sequencing. So for example, if you look at the column here, you have unknown and half, um, this corresponds to whether the sample was run with user or UG treatment, full no UG treatment, or this UDG partial UG treatment, which only clips up, which leaves um, only one bit of damage at the end of your base pairs, uh, your reads, sorry. Double corresponds to double single-stranded libraries because you have to genotype these slightly differently. So having this information is very, very important for processing, and Eager does a lot of um, clever things to basically process the, the, or automate the processing of the data appropriately for you. So you don't have to manually check, okay, it's, it's a double-stranded library, so I have to run with these settings. Oh, and this library is run with single-stranded, so I have to run it with these settings. So Eager should do this for you based on this metadata information, which we have standardized, again, all in ancient machine and deer. So I'm hoping you're already starting to see how we're trying to build um, in the community sort of a, a network and a sort of like whole infrastructure around um, ancient metagenomics to make it much easier and faster. You get the fun part, which is the actual analysis of the data, not just downloading and cleaning um, everything all the time. So has everyone else been able to see this thing? So I've got to ask that. Were you able to download your FASQ files? Yeah, and were you able to see the contents of the TSV file or CSV file? Yeah. Wonderful. 
So I have to point out that uh, AmDirty is not specific to Eager uh, in terms of the, the generating the input sheet. Um, we are happy to add uh, extra pipelines, for example, or extra downloading tools that you may want to use. So for example, there is another pipeline called NFCore Fetch NG NGS, which also allows you to rapidly download um, all, lots of data from the ENA and SRA based on a, a range of accession codes. Um, there's also curl, there's wget as well. So we are welcome to take feedback and suggestions of um, other pipelines you would like to prepare input files for or uh, other downloading tools, just let us know. In the, in the, in the best way is probably ask on the Slack channel or on the GitHub um, repository. And obviously when this is out of beta and it's ready, we'll make a proper announcement on the mailing list and uh, spam Slack channel. Uh, okay, because we're running out of time, uh, we're going to skip the tasks. We have obviously the references. Um, I'll skip that as well. And then this is the task. So to very quickly recap, um, reporting of metadata is very messy currently in our field or paleogenomics in general. So try and consider this when publishing your own work. Don't leave all the information about how your libraries are built and uh, whether you run UDG treatment and how you sequence it, just in the SI text. It's really good if you could put it in tables in your supplementary information. You're welcome to use ancient metagenome deer as a template. Um, anyway, in the future, we would highly recommend people basically submit their, their metadata information about their um, samples to the project once it's finished. Like I said, it's a community-created community um, project. Um, you can use then ancient metagenome deer and amdirty to actually rapidly find and download your ancient metagenomic data. And you can actually contribute to ancient metagenome deer with Git. So once we've sorted out the SSH key problems, which unfortunately went a bit wrong today, apologies for that. Um, you yourself can basically clone the repository uh, or fork your repository, fork the repository, clone it, add your samples, add your metadata, push, and then make a pull request back into the main ancient metagenome deer repository. And that way you can help yourself and also the community as a whole. So everybody in this room um, make it easier to find your data and make their, their, their publications and projects more powerful. And so with that, I'd like to say, ask, is there any questions before lunch? I'm very hungry. So if you're, if you're also hungry and want a few questions, that's also fine with me. So Trey, you can just unmute and, and speak out. Yeah, sorry, I just had a quick question. Uh, when is the AmDirty av publicly available? In the next couple of months. So okay. we've uh, just finalized all the library metadata, so that's ready. We just, we just need to do one more hackathon, basically, to polish and test. Then it'll be ready. OK, awesome. Thank you. And we're going to probably publish that as well. So you can look up the publication. Uh, there's a question in the chat, but I lost my cursor. What would we have to do? So if you go to the Ancient Metagenome Deal website, there's instructions there for you already. So I'll show you what to do. Spam community. Go to Ancient Metagenome Deal. So this is the Ancient Metagenome Deal repository. You have the various tables in these directories here. Or rather, let me go to the dev branch. It says the library metadata that I will look at a bit sooner. So for example, this is a sneak peek of the library TSV metadata. And this is like three or 4,000 uh, libraries in the community. So about, I think, 30 people have helped contribute to the project, with some of the people already actually in the, in the room today. And so that's what it looks like. And what you can do is either ask uh, from access. So if you join the Slack channel, Engine Metagenome Deer on the spam Slack, I can actually make you uh, a contributor. And here you would go here and you can make a fork. So we have this one here. You would then, um, you can either actually go into the file itself and edit it here. So for example, pressing the pen, or you can like we were trying to do earlier, you can make a clone here. So copy, clone, you then change in your directory into the corresponding directory. So let's say 
Maria, you work on pesticides or well, not pesticides, but microbes. Um, you would then go into the directory, edit in Excel, and then using the same pull push or comment pull push uh, cycle that Megan was introduced earlier, push to your branch, and then you make your pull request up here. Uh, if that if you don't really remember what that is, we also have documentation under the wiki here on how to do so. For example, here. Or for samples, you can look at here. I think the samples even has screenshots. Whoops. So we just documented how to do this. But I'd always recommend just come on the Slack channel and ask there, and that's normally the fastest way to um, to learn how to do this. We, reg we regularly run community events where we do this together. <clears throat> 